the flare tool okay. is the, one of the big ones that the guys just want more and more and more things from. Just because online right now, mm -hmm. there's a thing going around that says, um, if you do five manual flares, either two of those are gonna be leaked, no matter who you are. Yeah, okay. It's kind of the average right now. I did five myself, four leaked. Okay. So <laughs> I'm, I became, I was like- Maybe no. you're just really bad at this. I, you know, I thought I was really good too. That's uh -huh. a bad thing. So then I tested it and I was like, okay. And then I gave it to my old man who did it forever. I was like, do a couple flares for me. His leaked, I was like, okay. Nice. You told me it's nothing that I need to know to really push this a little bit more. Yeah. And the techs that fall in love with this, it pays for themselves a couple of jobs. Yeah. So a lot of these newer techs, they're not using <laughs> their parents' tools anymore. Right. So when I learned, I was using my daddy's tools. He learned from his granddaddy's tools. Yeah. Now with social media and everything, they're seeing, hey, I can learn how to do something more efficient and better. Yeah. I don't have to do it the old school way. There's newer ways to do things. Right. So that's been a cool thing to and watch. And the newer way is not always play. just faster. Like this is a great example of the new way being a lot better. You get an exact flare. It's like a factory made flare every single time. It's really easy to use. You can't really mess it up. I mean, like that's the thing that the first time I went to use this, I'm like, okay, I'm going to make a video on this. And let me practice before I turn on the camera. It was just perfect. And I was like, oh, that was so easy. And so like anybody can make a good flare. Whereas like you're talking about the statistics for manual flares, a guy who's decent at making a flare two out of five are gonna be leaking. Mm -hmm. Like that's pretty bad. It's kind of a crazy thing to think about it because that's the way everybody learned whether you do it by hand or mm -hmm. the one with a drill top. There's a hundred different ways to do it. Yeah. And you're not, by manually doing it, there's no way to do it perfect every time. Yeah, and in my experience, you can get a flare that's imperfect to seal for a bit. Correct. And that, but as that unit runs and there's vibration on that joint, one, you've over tightened it in order to get it to seal because your flare wasn't perfect. And so as it runs, that flare cracks. And then you have this hairline crack that goes through and it's leaking refrigerant. Uh, whereas if you have a perfect flare, you don't have to over tighten it to pass your leak inspection during install and you can have the confidence that flare is going to last. Yeah, this is what we use on all of our installs when we are doing brand new flare joints. We also have them on our service trucks because if a joint starts leaking, it needs to be remade and we need to have this tool. And so if, if one of our guys is out somewhere without that tool, they will schedule the job for the next day just to make sure that the, the new flare that needs to be made is made with the tool, so. Uh, it makes perfect sense. That yeah. way you guys don't have to go back on a call. Yeah. Well, show us it in action. Well, the nice thing about it is, well, one, you're not doing it manually, but it's also extremely simple to use. Let me grab out a 5 8 die. Okay. So with these, you're gonna have little air, or lines on the actual die, arrows on the tool. So okay. on the die, you got arrows. All you can do is you're gonna take your piece of copper, push it through your die, you're gonna take this guide, push a copper up to it. Yeah. I always do one more push on the die just to make sure you're nice and clamped in. So you uh, have pre-done something to this copper that we should probably talk about. So any copper that you should be deburring or de-reamering. Yeah. So you can either use uh, wherever my deburr tool, a deburr tool. Yeah. Good. Or a ream tool that'll have an inside yeah. and outside reamer. And he already did that to this. You can see him down on here. Did them all pre-cut. He did. Yeah, make that's it easy. an important part. So important part is make sure you have one really good copper. It's not cheap copper. Yeah. There's no dings, dips, or anything weird on the copper. Yeah. It just it's nice and fresh. So you got a little arrows on the top of the actual tool and some lines on the die. You just line them up. Boom. And then you lock it in. From there, it's easy. You just push a button. You'll be able to see your battery life from 25% to 100 and okay. also the flaring tool working. Yep. So when the flaring tool is on, there's an actual green light indicating it. And once that green light turns off, the machine's done. So in about 12 seconds, you have a perfect flare. Boom. Right now, we'd probably still be setting up our flare block to make sure we right. had it. I'd be still working it, trying to get it just the right depth. That's one thing I love about this, this stopper here, so you actually have a flare at an exact depth that you need. Whereas in the manual, that's one of the problems. You're making it too deep or too shallow. If it's too deep, then it's actually cutting into the threads of the flare and you're destroying your connection. And if it's too shallow, then you're likely gonna, as vibration goes, you're likely gonna pull off of that. Exactly, it takes all the guesswork out of it. Boom. 
Oh man, can you see that? The only thing I like to remind people is don't forget your flare Look at that, that baby. That's Woo. it. It's perfection. Yeah, I love it. Just don't forget to don't forget put the your nut on before you. Exactly. <laughs> your flare. Other than That's that, classic. you're good to go. But it well, makes it quick, easy, and efficient. Yep. You're not stumbling manually. Mm -hmm. You're not. There's no guesswork. Yeah. It's just a perfect flare every time. So uh, Navic has been with us every year that we've done the symposium. This is the fifth annual, and I know a lot of you guys are missing out on the fun. You wanted to be here, but you couldn't be here. And uh, so I'm hoping to give you a taste of what's going on um, and some of those tools. But they've always been a huge supporter of what we do at HVAC School. They're a huge support at the symposium every year, so I really appreciate that. We appreciate um, you guys. Tell me about something new that you guys have that, that people are excited about. Well, since we were talking automatic, we'll go manual. Okay. So, hydraulic tube expander. Oh, wow. Kind of been a thing everybody has. Yeah. This is going to be a redesign. Okay. Cool thing about this one is let me grab a 5 ace die. So, these are the same heads that are going to work with our automatic. Okay. Put yeah. them right on top. Nice thing about this one is, you don't have to worry about splitting your copper ever because there's an actual stopper inside. Give that a try. So just like your normal one, just keep cranking away. Yeah. And you'll start seeing it actually fill, get harder a okay. little bit. Once it gets yeah. hard, you're gonna notice it release all by itself so you don't have to do anything. You don't have to stop and twist it to go to three quarters, nothing. Wow. There's no readjusting. So that once one. it's hit that limit, automatically reset. Wow, that's fantastic. If there's any reason you need it to stop, yeah, you do have a manual release on the top, but you won't need it. Okay, so the purpose of that design was so that you don't actually overstretch this even one click too much and create cracks in the copper. So that's awesome. Nope. Perfect. I love that. Love to see that. Cool. No, I haven't seen that one before. So that's just to make it nice, quick, and easy. And if guys want to jump up a little bit, they go to that automatic one, which all you do is you're gonna take the head from the manual one, take it over to your automatic. Same batteries work for all the hand-operated nice. power tools. Including the bender? Including the bender. Wow. So then you're just gonna take one of those and push one button. So instead of you sitting there cranking, I'm just pushing one button. Okay. It's gonna do the same automatic stop. All right. And you're done. Nice. Perfection. So you can do it automatically, you can do it manually. So if you get the kit, you can actually have one battery charger and interchange your batteries. Correct. All of them. You guys, you need all three of these. You really do, trust me, trust me. Just for the, uh, just for the, um, the mental health of being able to do the same job that easy, right? Exactly. <laughs> cool. Well, we're going to be back around with the camera a little bit later and talk about the new recovery machine. Um, it's a beast. You're going to want to hear about it. So we'll be back. But uh, thanks. Thanks for showing it off. Sounds great. Appreciate you guys. All right. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, hvacrschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community, Vortex by Tex.